Now we're going to switch over and do a little host setup. Remember the host machine is the machine that you want to back up. I'm going to create a new tab and I'm just going to use my laptop as the machine that needs to be backed up. So we're going to be accessing the Raspberry Pi using Secure Shell or SSH. But we don't want to have to type our password every time. So we're going to set up a passwordless key to let us access the Pi. The first step, we'll create a SSH dir in our home directory. Now this may already exist for you. If it does, that's okay. We're going to make sure that's only readable by our user as a safety precaution. And then we're going to generate a set of keys, a public key and a private key to access the Pi. So if we take a look in the SSH directory, we can see we have a backup key, that's the private key, keep that safe, don't share that with anybody. And then we have the backup key.pub, which is the public key, which we can share. Next, we'll create the backup script that's going to actually do the backup process. I'm going to put mine in a directory called backup in my home directory. Then I'm going to create a little shell script to actually invoke rsync, which is the backup tool. I'm going to set a constant called backup server to point to the pi. Don't forget the colon, it's important. The next line invokes rsync. Use your username in place of carpy. I'm going to back up my home directory to the backup server. Let me explain this. This, of course, is the rsync command. These are the options of how we want the data to be transferred and stored. Delete excluded means if I've excluded any files and they exist on the backup, delete them when we do the backup. Exclude from home carpy backup exclude reads the exclude file and any files listed in there will be excluded from the backup. This is the directory I want backed up, my home directory. This is the location of the backup, the backup server. And save that and exit, and we'll make it executable. There we go. Next, we need to create that exclude file that has our list of exclusions from the backup. Remember I said we should protect our private SSH key, so we don't want that copied to the backup. No need to back up my cache files. You can put anything in here that you don't want backed up. And I suggest that as you run your backup, you check out the logs and see the files that are getting written out there that you may not want and you can add them in here as an exclusion. These lines may look a little weird as far as the formatting goes. Check the man page for rsync for more information. Okay, we've got a script to do the backup, but we need to add our public key to our Raspberry Pi so that it'll actually let us connect. Let's start the process by copying the key over to the Pi. I'm just going to copy it to the home directory to begin with.
Now let's switch back to our server and configure it to receive the rsync backup by allowing the SSH key that we just created to access it. So I'm back on the Pi. We'll need our own SSH directory. You can see from our copy before we have the public key of the host that we want to back up. We're going to move that into the SSH directory as a file called authorized keys. Authorized keys takes a set of keys and it will allow remote users to connect via SSH using those keys. In other words, they can use the keys and not need their password. Now what we just did was copy in a passwordless key as an authorized key. That means anybody with our private key could access the Raspberry Pi with no password. It's not exactly what we want because it's a little dangerous. So we need to restrict this key to just be able to run our rsync command. Let's do that. Edit authorized keys. We're going to prepend a big long cryptic looking string in front of this key that will limit the key to just running the rsync operation. Use your username here. one space at the end. Save that. This restriction restricts just the rrsync command to run and access only, in my case, opt backup carpy, which doesn't yet exist. So I'm going to make that. Also, rsync is not installed by default on the Raspberry Pi, so let's fix that. even with rsync installed that remote rsync is not quite in a usable format for us. Um, for whatever reason it's packaged in the Debian as a gzipped target so we're gonna it, we're gonna ungzip it to user local bin. that arcane looking command simply uncompress the rrsync gz to user local bin. Need to make it executable. And I think the server now is good to go. So let's switch back to our host machine and try this thing out. Now your first backup may take a long time, but the backups after these should be much, much faster. Mine went pretty quick because I don't have a whole lot here, but oh look, there's my third grade essay. Such a great essay. So that's cool, the backup worked. If I run it again, not a lot to do, very nice.